Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. We've got an interesting one for you today. We're going to show you the different ways you can add custom CSS to the Divi theme to style your modules a little bit further. So let's enable the Visual Builder. And let's go down. Well, I'm going to add a new row. I'll put three columns in. And let's start by adding a little button module. I'm just going to pop it in the middle. I'm not going to do anything else with it there. OK, say we wanted to sort of animate this button a bit. Divi thankfully has a lot of ways of doing this without CSS, but sometimes you need to add custom CSS just to take it to the next level. And the difference is a little bit like painting by numbers and painting. If you know a bit of CSS, you can really do some crazy things. So one way of adding CSS, and this is common to all modules, is if you go over to the advanced, you'll find a little custom CSS drop down. And they've all usually got a before, which is a pseudo element, the main element, which affects the main thing itself, and the after. And various different ones will have different sections for the various elements of the actual module itself, like titles and images and stuff. I'm just using a regular button here. So say we wanted to have this sort of skew on hover. Let's add a bit of custom CSS to our main element here. So I'm gonna, I've got a bit of CSS pre-written over here. I'm just going to copy and paste it rather than write from scratch today. I'm going to tell it to do a transformation. It's going to take half a second and it's going to ease in, ease out. When I hover over it, I want it to rotate by 10 degrees. So one way of doing the hover effect in here, we've already put some CSS in our regular state here. With all Divi modules, if you hover over the dark writing within a module, you see some little icons appear. If there's a little arrow, we can set a desktop state when the mouse is not on it. That's what we've done there. When they put their mouse on it, we can put something else in there. Let's tell it to rotate when we hover over it. So I'm going to say transform rotate, and it's going to rotate by that much when we hover over it. If I save this now, it'll go back to normal state. And when we save, we can go in there and it'll rotate when we hover over it. Very easy. How easy was that? Another great thing to do, let's add an image module, perhaps. We'll choose an image. Let's just grab this one here. OK, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the advanced tab again, where we went before for the custom CSS. But this time I'm going to go to the CSS IDs and classes. And I'm going to give this a class name. Let's call it image gr for image grow. So we've now got a name for this thing called image grow. We'll save our changes here. What we can now do is go down to our dashboard, go down to Divi, go down to the theme options. On the general page right here, if we roll down, we've got a custom CSS panel. And you'll also find the same panel in appearance and customize. You'll find an additional CSS panel there that has the same stuff in it. OK. Well, we gave that a class of image grow. All classes have a dot or a period in front of them. There's a dot. Give it the class name. Image GR, I believe it was. Now we can open and close some curly brackets. And inside, we can put a bit of CSS. So again, I've got a bit of CSS pre-written. Let's just paste it in there. And this is going to transform the scale. It's going to start off at 1, which is normal size. Then I'm going to copy this and create a hover effect. Control C. Just drop down and make a hover effect. Just go to the end of your class name. Put a colon there with no gap and the word hover. When we hover over it, get rid of that second line there. I just want to change the first line. I'm going to make it 10% bigger, so 1.1 of the size there. I want to roll down, make sure we save the changes. So we got a little green check mark. Go back to our page. Let's just make sure everything's saved. Once saved, we can refresh the page. And once fresh, when I hover over the actual image, you can see it's taking half a second to grow. So that's another way of doing it. 
Let's add another little module over here. Let's use a call to action, perhaps. There it is right there. This time, I'll do the same thing. I'll go over and give it a class name. So I'm going to go over to the advanced CSS IDs and classes. And let's give this class a shaker because I've got a little bit of CSS. We'll make it shake when we hover over it. Now to add the CSS here, I'm going to actually add a code module. Let's just roll this up and we can add it anywhere we want. Let's just add it under this image. I'm going to go down here. We've got a code module and this is another place we can write the CSS. But a code module you can also use for JavaScript and other sorts of script and different sorts of code. So to tell it it's CSS, we need to open some style tags. So it's left pointy bracket, the word style, and then a right pointy bracket. When you put the right one in, it'll put a closing style tag in for you. The only difference is it's got a forward slash there. In between, we can write any code we want. So I've got a little animation. Let's pop that one in there. So I've just popped in a little animation there. The animation is called shake and it's going to shake it around when we hover over it. As you see there, we've got an actual hover state right there. There's our class name and we've got a colon on the hover. So it's going to shake when we hover over it. And we've done lots of animations like this. If you're interested in learning some of this CSS, have a look at our simple CSS playlist. Let's save this one there. And as you can see, when I put my mouse over that, it's sort of wobbling from side to side. So there's another place that you can put CSS with a code module. And you might have noticed that the code module is very hard to see there. Occasionally you'll have trouble getting to it because it doesn't really take up any real estate as it's just code. If you do have trouble getting to it, hit the little purple button on the left hand side. We've got a wireframe view button. If you hit that, it takes you to wireframe road and you can get to them very easily that way. Great. Let's go back to desktop mode. I've got one more little one for you today. Let's add a, perhaps a little text module right here. And we can do some inline text, which is actually in the actual code itself. So here we've got just a general text. There's the general text that's in there. I'm going to separate that advanced settings down the bottom there. And let's make it a link. I haven't got a real link. I'll just put a hashtag in there in place of a link. And let's also make it perhaps a heading three or even a heading four. doesn't really matter. OK, well, that's fine. We separated it down the bottom there. But we'll want to style this and give it its own bit of code. So what we want to do is go from the visual to the text over here. And we'll notice that we've got our H4 down the bottom there. It's got a href, which is the link, and then the text itself. Now where it says h4 there, we can click right next to the four, put a little space in there, and we can start writing style for it. Again, we need to tell it its style. So I'm going to say style equals, then open and close some inverted commas. And we can turn it into a little button if we want to. So let's say background, colon, blue. As you can see, that's giving it a bit of a blue background there. Now we need to put a semicolon in here to add some more. We separate these with a semicolon. If you forget to put in that in there, it won't read the next piece of code. So I want to make it white in color. Let's say color. FFF, which is white. As you can see, that's changed that to white. Let's add a bit of padding to the top and bottom and also put it in the middle. So I'm going to say text align colon center. As you can see, that's popped it in the center for us. Put another little semicolon. Let's add a bit of padding to the top and bottom, make it more central there. So let's say padding top. Let's say perhaps 10 pixels. That's OK. Let's add a bit on the bottom as well. So let's add, I'm going to actually copy that padding top. Let's go to the other side of the semicolon there. And just paste it in. And I'm going to change the top to a bottom. So we've now got 10 on the bottom, but that doesn't look quite enough. Let's add a couple picks to the bottom there. Let's say 12 pixels. That looks a bit better. And let's give it a border radius. So we've got some round corners there. 
yeah, let's say 30 pixels perhaps. Great. And just to push it down a little bit from the text above there, let's give it a margin on the top. So let's say margin dash top. Let's give it 20 pixels perhaps. That gives it a bit of separation from that text on the top there. Great. There's another little option. You've got to make sure you're on the text and not the visual. If we pop back to the visual, you won't see that at all. We can still grab it and do things to it if you want. Perhaps we'd like to make it bold. That makes it bold also. But to see the actual code and write more code, you need to go into here. And remember, we've written it in the H4 little bracket there just by adding style equals and opening some inverted commas there. Put in whatever you want. Great. Well, that's it, really. There's several places to put your custom CSS and several ways of doing it, depending on what you need. So let's save our changes here and exit the visual builder. If I go down, there's our button. It's going to skew when we hover over it. And we put that actually in the button module itself. Down below, we've got this little text module where we created a little button for it. You could add another class and have it wobble, do whatever you want to it if you wanted to. But that's another way of doing it in line there. This one we wrote in the custom CSS panel of the Divi, and it's just making that image scale up a little bit. And the wobble one, we actually did with it by adding a code module and putting it in the code module. If we go back over here, the only one that I haven't covered now, if we go to appearance and customize, that's going to take us to this page here, right at the bottom, you'll find additional CSS. And you can also write it here and see what you're doing on this side by making whatever page it is temporarily your home page. And you may notice that the code that we wrote in our custom CSS panel with Divi is right there too. So this is the same thing as the Divi custom CSS panel there. So there you go, guys. There's the various options for adding CSS to your Divi theme site. There's plenty of them and they work great. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.